All right, so today we're making a big mess in my small 9x6 kitchen. Welcome to hell. All right, so I'm not gonna spend a whole ton of time going over our current situation. We all know the world is on fire and we're all trapped at home and it sucks. I am so sorry for literally everyone right now. We're all very stressed. I want you to know I'm proud of you. You're doing amazing. However, I am gonna give you a little bit of context as to why we're doing this video today. And that's because I'm in art school while all of this is happening. And for some reason, I'm still required to do studio quality work when I have no access to my studios. So we're just uh, having a Tim Gunn come to Jesus kind of moment and we're gonna make it work for us. Like I said, I turned my little kitchen into a printmaking studio for the time being, so I'm gonna kind of talk about that. And that's what today's video is gonna be. Cause I have to multitask. I'm gonna do homework and make a video. Priorities. But yeah, I feel like Printmaking is really kind of a resilient method. Like, you don't need all of the bells and whistles when you make prints, even though they absolutely help. Um, but you can still make some pretty quality stuff by drawing them by hand. And I just wanted to show you guys a couple ways that I've kind of been experimenting with since being home and trying to make work. Um, one of these ways I know is going to work, but the other three I'm kind of just playing around. Uh, I'm going to link some better tutorials in the description for a lot of what I'm talking about because I'm kind of bad at explaining what I do and I think that comes from me doing it for so long. I'm just kind of like those meme tutorials where it's like draw the circle and then draw the rest of the owl. So bear with me. Um, however, I'm also throwing a secondary wrench into the mix because I have to use a different kind of ink. Uh, because I usually use oil-based inks that you have to clean with mineral spirits, but I have a very small cat uh, who I love and adore, and I don't want to hurt him because those are not very friendly to your lungs, and also very bad for my pipes. My actual plumbing pipes. My sink. It's bad for my sink. My maintenance man will kill me. Please. Oh my god. Alright, so first things first, we have to talk about this ink. All right, so like I said before, I usually use oil-based ink and specifically the etching ink from Gamblin. Chef's kiss to them. Love that stuff. Use it for everything. 10 out of 10. But I don't have any of that on hand at the moment. And I also couldn't use it even if I did because I would have to use mineral spirits to clean it up. And as we kind of discussed before, that's just like a no-go in my teeny tiny apartment. So what I do have is this sample set that I got from a conference I went to that had this Akua, I think is how you pronounce the brand. It's Akua, but it's soy-based ink. And it says specifically that it cleans up with just soap and water. So hearing that, I'm immediately getting like Crayola vibes, no shade. I didn't do much research into the brand. I just saw that it was etching ink and I was like, we're gonna go for it. Uh, opening it though, it has the texture of like an expired lotion. Like, it was oily, but still runny. Like, it made no sense to me. So I was really frightened to use it. Um, and you guys are going to kind of see how it performs because I didn't switch inks throughout the entirety of this thing. So we're just going to talk about how it affected, like, the different methods I was using and, like, maybe some tips on how I could get it to work better. All right, so first of all, this was way too much ink. Uh, it came out a lot faster than I was expecting it to, but it's whatever. Just note, you don't need this much ink for anything we're going to do today. Um, what I'm ruling it out on, though, is a big sheet of plexiglass, and I have a ton of these because I use them for, like, different printmaking things that I do. Um, but all it is is just a giant sheet of plastic, and you could really probably use, like, those disposable paper palettes or, like, a paper or plastic plate. You just really don't want to lay this down, like, on your countertop or on your table because I feel like it'll stain. Most inks do. And kind of circling back around to that whole texture thing, I feel like if I had my palette knife, I couldn't find it for this, so I just wasn't using it. Um, if I had taken my palette knife and maybe mixed it around, it would help me figure out the texture a little bit more, because once I was rolling it out with my ruler enough times, it started to feel a little bit thick and gain a texture that I was familiar with. Um, it just definitely seems like an ink you have to work in before you use. So after figuring out the texture and everything, I decided it was just time to jump right in and put it to the test. So our first printmaking method is just really simple, something I knew was going to work and something that I knew how the results should come out to look like, uh, which is woodblock printing, which is one of the easiest ones to do at home. Um, 
you can use things like styrofoam or potatoes. You could honestly look it up. There's like tons of like little life hacks, but traditionally you would use something like linoleum or wood. I'm using a wood block. I specifically use MDF or microfiber board and it's because I usually do larger scale projects and MDF is cheap and easy to cut. Um, I can talk more about that whole process and how I do that in another video and how I prep my plate and stuff, but all you need to know is this is my block. It's a drawing of a treehouse. I've been going through a phase where I just really like treehouses. You might have seen last week I did a painting of one. I, It's just a whole phase right now, but that's my theme. So I carved the block prior to recording everything and I am just rolling it up now. Um, things I noticed when I was rolling it up, and this might just be because I didn't prime my MDF because I didn't have shellac to do that. Um, it was a little bit difficult to tell how much ink was actually getting onto the block. And that sounds kind of silly because like, oh my God, you can see it physically, but it's like, you need a certain amount for it to come off and pull right. Um, so I kind of struggled with that. So I have a couple bad prints, but I did manage to get a few that worked really well. Um, and something that I noticed worked best for this is if you got the paper wet when you went to do it. Um, yeah, so definitely wet your paper and then afterwards you're just going to lay it down on top of the block. And I use a rolling pin and a wooden spoon, like super old school. It's just, you run it right over and it's like the pressure that matters. So press on the areas that you want the ink to be on the paper. Really self-explanatory, but you just got to say it, you know? The rolling pin helps because you can put a lot of pressure down all at once and make sure things are going on evenly. Um, but I do understand that it's kind of hard to do that with a wood block sometimes. Um, but mostly what I recommend looking for is like, if you're doing it and you're doing it right, you should kind of see some of the ink coming through the back. Side note, if you're using something like linoleum or styrofoam or just making kiddo stamps with potatoes, you absolutely do not need this much pressure because oftentimes putting that much pressure could actually hurt your block. So I would just recommend uh, doing the thing where you push a little bit, peel it up. If it looks like it needs more ink, re-ink it, lay it back down. It's really forgiving. As long as you're able to line it back up and you have your place marked on the paper, it shouldn't be a big deal. All right, so round two, we're talking about trace monotypes, which is something I don't use that often, but they are very, very easy. So if you're new to printmaking, this is something that you could kind of try to play around with. Um, all you're gonna need is a surface to roll your ink out on. You're gonna need some tape. You're gonna need a piece of paper to pull your print on, and you're gonna need an image that you wanna make a print of. So it could be like a drawing you make yourself or a newspaper clipping or a photo you've taken. Does not matter, do whatever you want. So I started off by taping off the area that I wanted to roll up with ink. And I usually make this area a little bit smaller than the paper I'm trying to pull the print on or the exact size. Um, for this one, I did the exact size. So I'm just kind of taping around the edges of it. And then I rolled it up with ink and something I want to take note about this specific ink. I kind of mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it here because it kind of leads into our next project as well. You do not need nearly as much of it as you think you would. Um, usually with oil inks, you kind of look for like a popcorn-y effect when you roll stuff up, but this one, that just doesn't happen. So I just rolled it up until I couldn't see the surface anymore. Um, and that seemed to work fine. If I ever over inked it, my paper had a tendency to slide or pull up too much pigment and it was just a mess. If anybody has any tips for this ink, like let me know, cause other people probably use this and I'm just bad at it. Um, but yeah. So just roll it up enough to where you can't see your surface. Then I peeled off the tape because I didn't want to mess with the excess getting on my hands or anything. And I wet my paper first, but then I laid it down on top of the ink area that I just made really gently. Don't put any pressure on it at all yet. Just lay it down, leave it alone. And then on top of that, I put the image that I'm going to trace over. And I did just that. I traced over it. I tried not to put any pressure on any other area of the paper. So anytime I had to have my hands on it, it's kind of hard to see, but I tried to have them leaning on the glass instead of like the image itself. So when you peel it up, you should have an exact mirror of the thing that you were tracing and it should come out like this. Mine had these little fuzzy textures, which I'm not sure if is supposed to happen, but in the other tutorials I was watching, it seemed like they had it too. 
I'm not sure if there's a way around it at all or anything, but it doesn't super bother me because I kind of think that a big part in printmaking, the reasons you choose the methods you do is because of the different textures. So this is nice and that's how it works. All right, round three is gonna be a regular monotype, which is something that traditionally you do with a press, but I just wanted to see for funsies if it would work here. So monotypes I feel are pretty good for abstract work. So this first one, that's kind of what I was trying to do. I kind of mimicked what I was doing earlier. I forgot to peel up the tape though. Um, I just rolled up an area with ink and I measured it to my paper and then I started just carving into it with like q-tips and I started putting rubbing alcohol on it just to see how it would affect the ink. Um, not a lot of stuff got to it, not gonna lie, but when I pulled it up it still looked kind of cool so I'm still probably gonna use it for something else. Um, I don't know, that's just one way to do it. Then I did it again and I just used the ink and q-tips this time. Um, that's a really solid method too. You could just roll up an area with ink, draw it out with q-tips, and just press your paper down on it. I used the rolling pin for this and it pulled it up pretty fine. Um, the only reason I feel like I probably had any texture in my paper is because of the paper itself. I'm using scrap paper that I've had throughout the semester, so it's like charcoal and stuff that's definitely not made for just mono print printing. But yeah, they turned out fine. They turned out about how I thought they would. I just wanted to show these to you guys because I know that this is a lot easier of an option, especially if you're trying to do this with like littler kids, because then you can just roll up an area and make them draw it out with things like Q-tips, or you could take credit cards to get cool textures, anything they want really. All right, so this last one is kind of what got me excited to do this whole video because I really wanted to experiment with this for a really long time. I'm just now getting the opportunity to, um, and it doesn't really cost a lot to try either. So we're going to be trying to replicate Andy Warhol's blotted line technique, which is something he used in some of his earlier ads and in some of his later works. Um, the video I watched on how to do this, they were using a ballpoint fountain pen or like a quill pen because the ink blots a lot easier, but I don't have one of those. So I'm swapping it out with a very, very thin paintbrush and then just my Akua ink. Um, the other materials you're going to need for this are just some printing paper, an image, and some wax paper that you would use to like cook with. So all that happens here is that you move the image that you want onto your tracing paper and then you put your printmaking paper under the wax paper, which I've taped down to make like a hinge kind of thing. Um, and then bit by bit, you're just going to kind of draw on with your paintbrush and ink the traced image on the underside so you can press it onto the print. Does that make sense? You can watch me do it or you can go to the video down below where they're doing it to see it in a better angle. But basically like the key with this is just to do really tiny strokes and just to go bit by bit because if not it's going to blot a lot more. Um, this is so fun. I love Andy Warhol so much. I would love to talk about Andy Warhol like all day. Out of all four of the methods that I've kind of tried, I kind of think that this one's my favorite and I'm already plotting like a bigger piece with this. I'm just so excited that it worked the way I hoped it would. It's definitely an acquired style. Um, you just kind of have to go with the flow and accept mess, which is something that I'm just totally down for. Um, but yeah. So this is what it turned out looking like. I just did a little baby portrait. Like I said, it's definitely like a very messy process, so it blots a little bit, but it's cool because I think that this has a lot of potential for mixed media. A lot of the littler prints I did today kind of have a lot of potential to build on top of with different things. So I don't know, it's just fun. And I'm already kind of plotting an entire project around just this process alone. So I'm so happy that this worked the way I hoped it would. All right, so now we're at the end of the video and we are out of projects. So all that's left to do is clean up. And to my surprise, this stuff did do what it said it was going to do. All it took was a little bit of dish soap and a sponge, and I just put it under the faucet and it came right off. Actually, melted right off is a better word. Like, I don't understand how this stuff can have such a weird consistency, but then come off so easily. As for my blue towels that were under my plates and the apron I was wearing that day, uh, the ink did come out of them for the most part, but I still don't recommend wearing, like, your Sunday's best to do prints in regardless. 
Um, because I don't know, like, if maybe you had a heavier amount of this ink on an area. Like, say, if it spilled, if it would come out all the way. Um, but yeah, it came out. I would say that this ink isn't terrible for the circumstances, but I don't know if I'll keep using it. Um, I think it's really good for, like, the blotted technique. I think that it's, like, the perfect texture for that. I think it's good for, like, teeny tiny monoprints. But but I probably won't be swapping my gambling out for this to do block prints anytime soon. All right, guys, so that is all I have for you today. Uh, I'm not going to show you the teeny tiny prints I made because I've already kind of built on top of them and used them for other projects that you guys are going to see later. But I will show you how the block print is turning out. Um, it's still a work in progress, but it looks pretty good after I've done the hand coloring on it. And the ink dries a little bit darker than what it looks like when it goes on, which I think you can say about a lot of inks. Um, but this one specifically, I noticed, got a lot darker. So, yeah, I don't know. This was fun. I'm kind of really happy that I finally had an opportunity to talk about printmaking on this channel, because usually, like, the thought of making a print when it's something I do for school and filming that and still making it, like, finished by the deadline, like... Something about that entire idea just, like, turns my organs outside of my body. But now that there's a little bit more leniency, I don't know. It's just interesting. I like it a lot. I might do a couple more videos about printmaking if you guys want me to. More specifically, I might kind of talk about my portfolio and maybe, like, some different methods of printmaking I use. If anyone wants it. Maybe. Um... But yeah, for now, I will leave you with that. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to look in the description for some actually good tutorials on how to do some of these. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just take this time to take care of yourself. Maybe try some new hobbies if you're bored. Um, mostly just stay safe. Be smart. That's it. That's all. Have a great week, guys.